What's up, everybody? Welcome once again to season two, episode two of Keeps Corner. Appreciate you coming out and posting up with your boy. Hey, look, real talk. I want to say something. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has hit me up for uh, supporting me and doing this show and everything like that. I've had a, a lot of people hit me up and give me ideas, uh, telling me, you know, they want to come on, collab with me, do stuff. I even had a, a company ask me to be a brand ambassador for them. Unfortunately, uh, because of what the uh, the product was, I had to turn it down. Um, I did appreciate the invite, um, but I, I mean, I've had a lot of love from people. I really appreciate y'all. Um, keep it coming. Let's keep it coming. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it today. So what we're going to do today is uh, I got a little special taste testing going on for you. But before we do that, y'all already know we got to start off with kick, kick. Or I thought we go left with it today, and I pulled out the Air Max. These are the Love in London Air Max 97s. Look, I, I love Air Maxes. The Air Maxes are so comfortable, such a casual shoe. Um, and when it comes to uh, Air Maxes, there's Air Max 90s, 92s, 90, uh, 95s, 97s. I think the 90, I think there, there's even more than that. Uh, but when it comes to Air Maxes, the 97s are, are definitely my favorite. Uh, I love any colorway. And uh, pretty much, y'all know me, I'm a sneakerhead. I love any shoe. Um, but as long as the colorway matches what I'm wearing, hey, I'm with it. Uh, the Love in London uh, Air Maxes, these is them right there. Such a clean looking shoe. That's your kick of the day. Get your ass back out on the court. What's up, everybody? On today's agenda, what we're going to do today is we got a special taste testing. Not going to show you what's under here just yet, but after we do this taste testing, we're going to kick it back out for the return of Key's Kitchen. And then after that, y'all already know, it's sports up in the clubhouse. All right, so the time has come. I'm going to reveal what it is we're taste testing. Watch out. Whew. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of excited about this but also kind of nervous. I probably should have a puke bucket uh, handy, but we're going to be tasting it. I got what? Eight beers, uh, not beers, eight sodas here. Look, I'm not even a soda drinker, but uh, I think this was something that was definitely, uh, I'm always down to try something different, to try something new. Um, I had these uh, sent to me and I, I mean, how can I not try them, right? So they're just wild off the wall. Uh, different flavor, uh, different flavor sodas that we're going to taste test here for y'all. Let y'all know what they are. So uh, before before I do that, I want to show y'all my custom six pack holder. It's got my name on it. Got the Spurs, go Spurs, and a little bottle open, opener here. I don't think I'm gonna use that today. I'm gonna save that for save that. I got another bottle opener here. But shout out to my to my in laws for that. This a uh, Pretty badass gift. We'll leave that right there. But so the flavors of the soda that we have here: whew, ranch dressing soda, peanut butter and jelly soda. That actually sounds kind of good. Sweet corn soda, whew. dirt soda. It says shoveled and bottled in the USA. This just looks like muddy water. Oh my god. Buffalo wing soda. Grass soda. It says mold and bottled in it. That actually looks kind of good. It's grass, but uh, baking soda. Not baking soda. Baking soda. I got baking soda. It's bacon. Baking soda. Hmm. I admit, I love bacon. And I'm shit. Like any Hispanic, I love me some pickles. Uh, but pickle flavored soda? Not too sure, but hey. Enough talking. Let's just Let's see how we're gonna do. Here we go. Let's start off with. Oh, what we should what should we start off with? Um let's start off with let's start off with the baking soda. Alright? Everybody loves some bacon. Cheers. Mm. That ain't bad. 
they ain't better off. Uh, I don't, I don't feel like I get a bacon. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's good. I'm just not getting that, that bacon. I mean, maybe like some, maybe like some hickory bacon a little bit, maybe. All right, that, that ain't too bad. Uh, I'll fuss with it. Um, dirt soda. Get, getting the dark sodas out the way, I guess. All right, dirt soda. This can't be good. This is like a soda bean boozle thing. Dirt, dirt soda. Here we go. Cheers. Oh. Mm. Just tastes like a like a flat root beer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not really getting like a dirt taste. It just tastes like flat root beer. Like some flat bars or A and W. Nah. Pass. Alright. Ranch dressing. That that does not look good <laughs> at all. It's not appealing. It's not an appealing color to me. It just, oh, here we go. It does, you know what? I do love me some fucking ranch, especially the ranch from, uh, from Wingstop. I, I would literally get extra ranch and drink that shit up out of the cup. So this, I do taste the ranch dressing in it. Um, it ain't bad. I mean, if you're a ranch dressing fan. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. Surprisingly, ranch dressing soda. It ain't bad. I dig it. Mmm, let's go. Hey, if we, if we just did ranch dressing, you gotta do the buffalo wing next. Not gonna lie. This shit. Look, I am a wing fanatic. Wing fanatic. Love fucking wings from everywhere. Fucking up wings everywhere. For every any pizza place I go, I love I love me some fucking wings. But uh not sure how this is gonna go. Buffalo wing soda. Cheers. Ugh. Yeah. Feel like I'm drinking chicken, which is not a good thing. Uh, look, I know. Oh, it does even have a little kick to it. Like you, like you can taste that hot sauce. So it do got a little bit of, a little bit of a kick to it. Okay. Look, my stomach hurting already. Let me, let me not do that one again. Whew. Jeez. All right. Grass soda. Here we go. Grass soda. This can't be good. Oh. Oh, it's not. How does that taste worse than the dirt? Oh, I'd rather, I'd rather eat some grass than eat some dirt. Not in this case. I think I'd rather drink some dirt than drink some grass. That is not... Mm -hmm. oh. You know what though? If I liquefied liquefy some grass, this is what I would think it would taste like. Oh, pass. All right. Sticking with things that come from the ground. Some corn, sweet corn. You know, I don't even, I'm not even a big fan of Sweet corn. I fuck up some elotes, but uh, sweet corn. No, nah, I'm. A, I'd rather just have some the regular corn. But uh, this does not look good either. This is. This looks like a urinalis test. Oh. Oh, sweet corn. Cheers. Oh my god, give me a second. Oh my god. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, 
I don't think I want any more of this. Uh, it does taste like sweet corn. Like if you've liquefied the corn from your Thanksgiving meal and drank it. It tastes, I, it tastes buttery. Uh, all right, let me. Yeah, I could see how some people would like it. But then I drink it and I feel like I'm drinking like, the the oil that you pour in to, to pop popcorn. Yeah, I don't like it. All right, uh, let's go. Peanut butter and jelly. Look, I got high hopes for this one because my go-to snack at night, uh, if I'm not coming down the stairs to fry up a steak because as y'all see in the next ki uh, kitchen segment, when I come down for a snack, I'm coming to fuck some shit up. I'm not just coming for a quick and easy snack. Although sometimes I will get lazy and my quick lazy snack is a peanut butter and jelly. That's my go-to snack. So I got high hopes for this one. All right, peanut butter and jelly. Cheers. Just like it. Yeah, that is definitely a go. This might be my favorite one out of all of them so far, definitely. Ooh, yeah, goes down smooth, sweet. That's very, very sweet. Yeah, I dig it. Look, the proper ratio for our peanut butter and jelly should be like three quarters, three quarters uh, peanut butter and one quarter jelly. That is a proper ratio for a peanut butter and jelly. Uh, sandwich That's actually kind of how they have it here on the picture, but yeah, this is good. I would probably drink the rest of this food Not bad. All right now pickle soda pickle flavored soda Again, I got high hopes for this one. I, I saved this one for last specific for for a reason so Whenever, like, whenever I get a stomach ache or I get nauseous or something like that, I know I don't know. A lot of people say pickles make them nauseous, but whenever I get nauseous, a pickle actually clears it up just like that. I don't know. Let me know if this is just me, but I know when I eat a pickle, when I'm nauseous, and I eat a pickle, it goes away just like this. I didn't know what to expect with all these, so I saved the pickle one for last. Um, so if I get sick, hopefully this pickle still will cure me. Mm, oh. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can definitely smell that pickle. So, here we go. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's just like fucking up some carbonated pickle juice. Which I dig. I dig that. Yeah. My next goal is to, to try out that uh, pickle beer. The big red beer. We're going to do all that probably at a future segment. But... Yeah, pickle beer. I dig that. A pickle soda. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a that's a thumbs up for me. Now, as we were doing this, my mind started turning. We got a pair of stuff together that goes together. I probably shouldn't do this. I'm probably gonna hate myself later for doing this, but soda and dirt soda grass and dirt goes together oh that's terrible oh I shouldn't have done that oh Ugh, that was just as bad as they were individually mm -hmm. all right this has got to go because again I'll fuck up some wings and I'll fuck up the ranch dressing that comes with the wings so, got high hopes for these. Oh, that's pretty good. Hell, that might be the best together. That might be the best thing out of all this shit. I dig it. Oof. I need to go take some antacid medicine. <laughs> Y'all kick it out to keep...
What's up everybody? Welcome to this episode of Keith's Kitchen. What we are doing today is we are going to use this air fryer to cook up a steak. Now, if you like me, I'm somebody that when I get hungry and I come downstairs for a snack, I don't just like to get like a sandwich or a bowl of cereal. Hell no, I don't care if it's midnight. I'm coming to fry up a steak. So I've never really, I just got this air fryer. Um, and I was wondering how I could do a steak up in it, how they would come out as opposed to actually pulling out a pan, heating up the oil and doing all that. So I thought I'd do a test run on this uh, air fryer and just see if I can cook, if it can fry up the uh, steak better, if it comes out with more flavor or whatnot. So let's check it out. So I got this steak right here. I'm gonna, uh, I've got some fresh garlic that I'm gonna throw up on top of that for some flavor. And then all we're gonna do is just season that, boom, salt-based season that, and then we're going to add some pepper, but we're not going to add the pepper until after, because pepper burns, if you ain't know that, pepper burns, so you want to save pepper for the last thing to do, but I will tell y'all about this, this is another cosign I can tell y'all about, this french fry seasoning, yeah, I'm going to throw some french fry seasoning up on this steak, why? So, I throw this, this french fry seasoning up on everything, it's good, I'll cosign off on this seasoning all day. And guess where I got it from? Dollar Tree, for a dollar, I swear. A dollar for this, right here. So I already set, uh, set up this uh, air fryer to preheat. We already added on our salt right there. Now we're just gonna season it a little bit. Season our steak up like that. Salt bay that up. And then, so the air fryer will tell me when to flip the when to flip the steak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna season the bottom part yet. I'm gonna leave the seasoning on top, then we'll flip it, season the come back and season the other the other side. So I'm gonna place that steak up in there. Woo wee! You hear that seasoning already? So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my garlic around the steak a little bit. Bam! Watch out now. And little secret ingredient, we're gonna throw some butter all over that. Damn, watch out now. All right. So there it is right there. We're gonna slide that up in there. 20 minutes, come back, flip it, and see the results after that. All right, so we're about halfway through now. So let's go ahead and pull it out and see what we're working with. Woo all right, all right, not too bad, not too bad. I don't know if you all can see that right there. Looking a little good. Got that butter nice and soaked up right there on top. But I think we should flip it. So I'm going to flip it, let it cook for the rest of the time. Take these garlics off. Make sure you take them off. Don't throw them away so you can reuse them, put them up on the other side. Oh yeah, this other side looking kind of pale. So yeah, I think it's a good thing that we're flipping it. So, go go ahead and salt bay this up. Get that right there. Throw our garlic back on top. So we got about eight more minutes left. We'll come back do the taste test. All right, what's up everybody? So we got a few seconds left and the steak is done. We're gonna pull this out, give it our taste test. Woo wee! Look at that doggy right there. I must admit, I didn't think being up in here was gonna get too good a color. Well, that's a perfect color right there. That don't look too bad. Don't look too shabby at all. But the proof is in the taste. Let's check it out. Oh, got to put our pepper. Go ahead and salt, pep salt pepper this up. Put that over. Now, like I said, this ain't nothing too fancy. Not, not too fancy of a, a cut of steak or whatever. Like I said, this is just something... When I'm feeling like being a fat ass and coming downstairs and frying up a steak, um, just to 
cheap cut um and we're not trying to fancy it up too much with any like uh fancy spices or whatever like i said just something quick and simple um but let's go ahead and cut this open and uh shit i forgot a fork that's all right just gonna use the tongs but here we go let's see what this look like right here So on the inside, so that was about 20 minutes inside of the grill, uh, inside of the air fryer. That was about 20 minutes, and it pretty much gave me about pretty much a well done. Uh, it's pretty much what I expected considering um, it's a thin cut, thin cut of meat. Let me try this out. I feel like Uncle Rico on Napoleon Dynamite eating me a steak. gonna put it inside with my with my knife but let me act like I got some type of manners over here mmm woo woo <laughs> man my man mm -hmm. yeah if you didn't know how a steak will come out in the air fryer let me tell you do it that was good I'm gonna go ahead and finish this, kick it back out to Q's Corner. Welcome back, y'all. I'm still trying to recover from them sodas. Whew, but I hope y'all like that uh that keep that episode of Keys Kitchen. Uh, yo, that steak, these sodas might not have been fire, but that steak sure was. I do remember that steak. Uh, if y'all don't have an air fryer, I, don't, I know I'm kind of late to the game with an air fryer, but if you don't have one, y'all need to get one. Because them air fryers is the fucking truth. Oof. But anyways, let's go into our last segment of the day and head up into the club. All right, welcome to the clubhouse, y'all. So what we're going to be talking about today, finally, I can talk about basketball once again. And man, there's so much to talk about. Uh, the playoffs is among us. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like my Spurs ain't going to make it, but it's okay. Now I'm actually kind of rooting for my Spurs to move and we can kind of get a, a, a top hit. Uh, let Marcus Soldiers go for nothing at the end of the day. Um, shout out to my Marcus Soldiers who just retired. I know y'all heard about that. So, um, you know what? I, I want to speak this, speak this about Marcus Soldiers. I appreciate, uh, I know he caught a lot of flack from Spurs fans, a lot of flack, but at the end of the day, he chose us when no other free agents would choose us. And I don't think anything panned out the way that we expected it to, but even more so him. You know what I mean? Like, he came here, you know, Timmy had that one season with him, and then he's gone. I don't think anybody really expected Timmy to, to, to leave the way that he did. I thought they were going to have at least one more season to run it back. Um, and, you know, Timmy kind of left. Uh, Tony got traded. Uh, Kawhi became a bitch. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and, you know, he he remained humble and just played through it all. And it wasn't supposed to be like that. Like, we had all the hype in the world. We had Tony, Tim, Manu, Kawhi. And then we bring in Marcus Aldridge. And, you know, that was the turnaround. That was supposed to be the big turnaround. People didn't pick us. And then, not only did we land LaMarcus Aldridge that year, but we picked up um, David West. You know what I mean? He was another big name free agent at the time that chose us because LaMarcus Aldridge so, uh, you know, chose us. So, at the end of the day, hey, we never got him a championship. He never got us one. Um, but it is what it is. I appreciate Marcus Aldridge and I, I hope we get healthy again. Um, also today, what I want to talk about is Fox. Um, unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, what uh, the big fight of the weekend is Logan Paul and Ben Askren. Um, not even a fucking professional boxer. That's what's that's what's dominating the fight scene this weekend. Not even a professional boxer, Logan Paul. I can't stand this motherfucker. I'd get in the ring with him if I could just to shut his ass out. I can't stand Logan Paul. I hope he gives us not. Like he been talking cash money stupid shit to, to Ben Askren. Look. You may have gotten away doing that shit with, uh, with Nate Robinson, but Ben Askren, did he get knocked out in, in, in the 
record time, record UFC time? Yeah, he did. But at the end of the day, he still put that work in and, and did what it takes to get to the UFC. I'm expecting. I, and then he's been, like I said, then he's been talking all that cash money shit. Um, Logan Paul's been talking all that cash money shit. I say he goes to sleep in round two. I hope. I, I think that's what's going to happen. I hope. Uh, yeah, I keep seeing flyers and, and, and stories about Logan Paul calling out Floyd Mayweather, calling out Conor McGregor, and uh, then ask me like he don't even deserve to be in the, in the ring with them. So let's go ahead and end this shit now, so we can quit all that talk. And Conor can go and fight somebody better. And Floyd can fight somebody better. Um, and and if, if we can move on from that, because I'm, I'm tired of hearing about this dude. Uh, and then. Um, let me bring it back to basketball right quick. Um, speaking of Marcus Aldridge, hockey had choked the Nets. Um, my pick to win the championship, even with Aldridge um, retiring, I'm still going to take the Nets. Um, I can't stand fucking KD just the same way I can't stand Logan Paul. But, um, and you know, I, I'll give I'll give KD credit. Like, I think KD has what it takes to carry a team all on his own. He don't need all this help that he'd be getting, but... Yeah, I mean, it's just, that's a whole other subject that we'll talk about another time. I just think all these power teams, not just because my team can't seem to, to form a power team the way Brooklyn or Miami or L the LA teams um, seem to be able to do, but I just think it's bad for the NBA. Um, that's a discussion that we'll probably discuss another time like that. Um, that's all the time that we got for today on Keith's Corner. Look, I appreciate y'all showing, um, showing me some love. Um, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube at Keith's Corner. Um, I'm Keith, and you just got.